How committed are you to the things you love? A man by the name of Herbert Chavez is very, very, very committed to Superman. He has over 10,000 Superman items. He even moved into a new house in order to accommodate his growing Superman collection. Now, here's where it gets weird, or should I say, more weird. Chavez has undergone 23 surgeries to try and look more and more like Superman. Okay, that's pretty extreme. But I guess there is something to say for his all-in commitment. So my question for us today is this. Are we fans or are we truly followers of Jesus? When you read the Gospels, you see a lot of fans. Uh, Jesus was healing people and doing miracles. Sometimes those miracles involved food and drink. So yeah, who, who wouldn't want to be a fan of Jesus? There was a chance he was going to do something for you. But it seems that when large crowds began showing up, he would say something challenging that would cause many to walk away. It wasn't that Jesus didn't love the people. Of course he did. But he knew what was in the heart of man. He knew if they were all in or not like the rich young ruler who came to Jesus and said he wanted to follow him. And what did Jesus say to him? Go sell all your possessions and come follow me. And what happened? It says that the man went away sad. Is Jesus trying to say that we must sell all that we have to follow him? No, not necessarily. But I think the idea was that we must be willing to give up all to follow him. You see, that's the difference between a fan and a follower. The introduction of 1 Peter is so encouraging. Two verses of just being bathed in blessing. We are reminded that heaven is our home, that God knew us before we were even born. We are reminded in these verses that we have the Holy Spirit indwelling us, meaning we have all the power we need to live holy lives. And when we come to Jesus in verse 2, we are told that there is a response on our behalf to all that God has and is doing for us. Verse 2c of 1 Peter 1 says, For obedience to Jesus Christ and for sprinkling with his blood, may grace and peace be multiplied to you. A life of grace and peace, which sure sounds good, doesn't it, is a result of the work of Christ on our behalf. That work was the sprinkling with his blood. Scripture says that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Jesus was all in for us. He went all the way to Golgotha. His back ripped to shreds by whips with metal bits in them. Big thorns from a mocking crown pushed into his skull. The Bible says his face wasn't even recognizable after the soldiers got done with him. He hardly looked human by the time they nailed him to the cross. And yet it was his shed blood that made us white as snow. And what does verse 2c say our response should be to all of this? Obedience. Obedience to Jesus Christ. Is it always easy to obey? No. But when we are reminded of all that Jesus has done for us, his work on the cross and his defeat of death, the least we can do is give him all of us. Let's preach the gospel to ourselves every day. Let's never linger too far from the cross. As John Stott put it, every time we look at the cross, Jesus seems to be saying to us, I am here because of you. It is your sin I am bearing, your curse I am suffering, your debt I am paying, your death I am dying. Nothing in history or in the universe cuts us down to size like the cross. All of us have inflated views of ourselves until we have visited a place called Calvary. It is there at the foot of the cross that we shrink to our true size. And friends, that's a good thing. It's there that God does his best work in us. Let's be all in for Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, thank you that you and your son were all in for us. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who, who allowed us to understand and convicted us of sin and allowed us to understand the gospel. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who went to the cross, was slaughtered on a cross to pay for our sins. Thank you that he didn't stay dead, that he rose from the dead. And because of that, we can have new life. We thank you for that. And Father, in response to that, may our lives be lives that are honoring and pleasing to you. May we live in obedience to Jesus Christ in response of your great love and mercy in our lives. In Jesus' name.
Amen.